Okay, uh, thank you all for coming today. Thank you for joining us. Uh, first of all, let me just introduce myself. My name is uh, Nuruddin Alhamuri. And uh, today's webinar is all about uh, gold and silver metals in general. And you will basically discuss discuss it from a technical point of view and we'll also discuss it. Uh, we'll discuss the reasons why gold is basically rallying for the past few uh, for the past a few months and if there is uh, and the, the reasons the the core cool reasons behind the, the rally despite the fact that the US dollar is uh, is rallying also since uh, or at almost like the highest level in almost more than a decade so in today's again in today's uh, in today's webinar we'll discuss all of these things and what are the core things that uh, you also need to keep an eye on, especially for gold and silver, every week that you need to keep an eye on. Uh, actually, last week we had the same webinar, but in in um, uh, in Arabic, and uh, basically we were talking about like further gains uh, toward like 1250, but actually we already passed that. Uh, however, we're still we're still getting also uh, the outlook for the next for the next few uh, for the next few weeks. But again, I would like to ask again if there, if you can see my screen and if the sound is loud and clear for everyone. If you have any issue, please let me know. Okay, that's good. So so far, I guess uh, there's no there's no issues. Okay. Uh, as for the questions, uh, if you, I'm going to start talk about it like step by step. If you have any questions, you can you can just write it, uh, write it to me, and I'll try like to answer it during the session. If not, I'll definitely answer it at the end of the session. I'll give you some time uh, so that we can discuss uh, a few a few more things. So, first of all, let's uh, talk just a little bit about gold and what happened for the past a few uh, for the past a few a few weeks so going quickly into the yeah going quickly into the technical chart for gold uh, can you guys see it I guess nope can you see oh no it's not Can you see the gold chart? I don't think so. Oh, no, 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 no. There you go. Can you see it now? I guess so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So let's talk about just a little bit about the recent the recent rally for gold, which is basically since almost like mid December after the crash of, or not the crash after the notable decline that we've seen since August of last year all the way to December. And since then, gold has been gradually rising and some would say this is because of, you know, technical balance after after a long uh, after a long decline. Some would say there is uh, the uncertainty about uh, about the US, about Europe, about uh, about Asia and China and the fears in the market about China. Those are a true factors, but you have like three factors basically that led to uh, gold and silver uh, uh, rally for the past few weeks. One of the major things that uh, that basically led to this rally. Number one, you have to know that inflation is one of the core reasons why the uh, gold prices are are uh, are rallying. Central banks across the board were estimating inflation to go back up gradually in the next in the next two uh, in the next two or three years however the numbers that we've seen for the past few for the past few months whether if it's from china from japan from europe from the states from canada brazil uh the BRICS countries most of these countries showed uh faster than expected inflation which is totally far away from the central banks uh, from the central banks estimates that's number one and number two Right now, some of the central banks, including the ECB, is some sort of in trouble. And what I mean by that, if we look at the inflation data in, uh, if we look at the inflation data in the eurozone, let's say, and 
Uh, let me also show you a chart of that. Um, uh, just a second. We have to bring back the chart. Oh, uh, just hold on a second. Uh, And I'm not sure if you guys usually follow these kind of uh, uh, these kind of events, but what I like always to do like is to merge between technicals and fundamentals, which is something that we call the intermarket uh, intermarket uh, analysis. We don't look just only for the chart; we look at the chart, and also we look for the fundamental catalyst of any move that can happen and uh, that possible can happen in the market. So. Um, therefore, we always look for uh, the uh, the catalyst. We always follow the uh, central bank's decision uh, and all the other all the other data. Let me show you the CPI here. For um, yeah, there you go. I'm going to show you the inflation data just for the eurozone, which is uh, actually remarkable for the past uh, for the past few a few months. Uh, one more minute. Sorry for that. Okay, chart's ready. Wait for that. Okay, so can you see this chart? Yeah. Okay, so the inflation data again, as I said, in most of the most of the uh, the uh, the countries ac across across the globe was expected to show some sort of a very gradual increase because of the aftermath of the financial crisis and the depression in, uh, in the global economy and the fears from China and a lot of a lot of stuff and also the uh, the massive rally in global equities at the same time so there was some sort of a consensus uh, okay so there is someone who can't hear us actually we did start hold on let me just reply quickly um, to check your audio. Okay, so there was a general consensus that inflation will be rising very gradually and uh, very gradually and it's going to continue and therefore the central banks will be uh, will start some sort of like tightening their policy very easily in a way that it won't affect uh, affect the uh, affect the economy or not to even lose control over inflation. But however, what happened for the past few months and this is again the chart that I'm seeing. I'm, I'm showing you here is the chart for the eurozone inflation, and this is the general CPI, the general inflation, not the core inflation. The core inflation is slightly below that level, but however, so the ECB, the European Central Bank, is saying that their price target or the inflation target is some somewhere around two percent, and right now we're at one point eight percent. And why I said here that the ECB might be in trouble. You know that the ECB is basically printing money on a monthly basis more than 80 billion euros in order to stimulate the economy and push inflation higher. However, the ECB said on December in December that they will start tapering the uh, uh, tapering the, uh, the the QE by almost like 10 billion each month, and by the end of this year, uh, the QE should uh, should end, and then they will start thinking about raising rates. But however, right now this was back in December when inflation was only at 1.1%, only 1.1%. And then in January, when the figures are 1.8%, this is kind of a very alarming for everyone around the world, whether for oil traders, for gold, for silver, for euro traders, it's all the same, it doesn't matter. But this huge jump, and also if you look at, uh, at German, uh, the German CPI, the German inflation, uh, where's the German inflation price index? And Germany is the same. We had a huge spike in inflation over the past few over the past few months, and also in uh, in Spain today, the inflation data. This is the German one, which is the biggest and the highest inflation rate since 2012. This is an alarming, and this is a very alarming uh, uh, news for the ECB because. If they kept the EC, if they kept the uh, the the QE or the quantitative program as it is unchanged, or even if they start even tapering as they 
promised us in April, the the ECB might be way behind the curve, which means that they might be so aggressive in uh, in tapering their QE and also in starting raising rates even might be faster than uh, might be faster than the Federal Reserve. The, the Federal Reserve actually was very reluctant in raising rates for the past few few, few years. So one of the reasons again why gold uh, has been declining since then is because of the global inflation, whether in Europe, whether in Asia, whether in the BRICS countries, or even in the States, Canada, there's a lot of signs that inflation is overshooting. In addition to that, if you look at the UK, the UK inflation is also rising. However, the, the UK has a little bit of, uh, uh, of a unique situation because of the Brexit. So that's why the Bank of England a few, few days ago, last week, uh, they were saying that uh, uh, even if inflation went up all the way to 2.5%, that wouldn't be a big issue for us because we're going to keep stimulating the economy as much as possible because we are leaving the EU, which should have a negative impact uh, to be uh, to be fair for, or uh, to be fair on the UK or, or on the British economy. So again, since December, mid December, and when the when the inflation figures around the world started to pick up. Gold also started to pick up, despite the fact that if you look at the uh, the dollar index chart, and later later on we're going to talk about the we're going to talk about the uh, the uh, the uh, this formation here. But the dollar index in December was rising even above 103. If we look at uh, the, uh, the the history of of the dollar index, and when it was back in 2015, when the dollar index was around 100. Gold prices was way below that level. It was almost around, if we go back, almost close to thousand to a thousand bucks. Uh, where is it? Two thousand fifteen. There you go. It was a thousand fifty. That's December two thousand fifteen. Gold prices was almost at ten fifty. However, today, when gold, when 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 the when the dollar index went up all the way to one o three fifty, which is like almost like three percent above the high, gold prices were trading at 11.30. That difference is very huge and that difference needs to be also, you have to keep it in mind that despite the fact that the dollar was rising, gold kept on rising again and at least made it uh, above and stayed and stabilized above the 13 or the 11, uh, 11.30. So going into the bigger picture now, for the past, again, as I said, for the past few, for the past few months, one of the major reasons why gold is rising and why silver has been rising is basically the inflation. Inflation is more important than any other factors. That's number one. Number two, don't forget that the uncertainty is still there, which is basically including, we're not talking about just uncertainty, what's the uncertainty here is the US elections and after the US elections and Donald Trump presidency in the States and how it might be in the next few months, nobody actually knows and we'll be waiting tomorrow his address to the Congress to give us some sort of an idea what basically he's thinking about the tax plan first and the fiscal policy, which is very important for inflation too. Because his tax policy, or sorry, his his um, uh, uh, his fiscal fiscal policy is expected to show uh, a notable, a huge actually impact on inflation if he is really thinking about pumping that much money into the economy through to rebuild the infrastructure. And if, the, if this happened actually, the Federal Reserve might be intervening in the market again, but in a faster way. So that's number that's number two. Another uncertainty in the market is basically from France. We have the elections in the next few weeks, and you have the far right party, which is basically a little bit extreme far uh, far right party, who's uh, basically campaigning to leave the eurozone. Just like what happened in 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 the UK a little bit, but here we have a vote from the Brexit. But in France, you have a new go you might have like a new government and a new presidency who is basically asking to leave the euro and to leave the European Union and to go back into their own uh, own currency backed by gold, backed by gold. So they if they if 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 this happened, actually, this will definitely increase. Also, uh, uh, this is one of the reasons also why gold is rising because of the uncertainty in France. Because if if this happened and basically uh, France leaves the the EU. They'll have to uh, to 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 create again recreate their own national currency, and backed by gold means that they'll have to buy they'll have to buy gold, and this is when 
gold might even like overshoot. So for the time being, looking uh, at the technical chart and let's just have a look why and how gold prices basically stopped here for the past for the past few years and this is this is from a technical point of view there is a lot of uh, uh, you might say there's a lot of uh, a lot of opinions in terms of technical analysis and I do respect all of the all of the opinions but if you look at the uh, in the low of December 2015 all the way up Someone would say, oh, it's not 61.8. That's right, but it might be 74.5. That's totally true, too. However, if you look at it in a, in a bigger picture, or the bigger picture, we'll, 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 I'm going to switch into the monthly chart in, in a bit. You'll see the, uh, you'll see the difference. But here, if you look at the daily chart, and uh, it's loading. Let's switch into the weekly or uh, monthly chart. If you look at the monthly chart, and here's actually there's many views on uh, on gold in terms of the monthly chart. Some would say, well, this is a 50% if you take it uh, if you take it from the lows of 1999. That'll be the 50%, and this is why gold basically uh, in December 2015 or in uh, in 2015 uh, why it basically bottomed out and then all the way back up. Some would say if you take it from Another cycle, which is the low here, which is almost like 500 before the rally, the huge rally started in 2007. Uh, some would say, yeah, this is 61.8. That's that's actually more accurate. There's there's many ideas about this, and again, technical analysis can be right and can be wrong in different different perspectives. But let's say that this uh, let's say that this basically this chart is right, or the cycle. Let's take it from from the lows of 2006 all the way to the to the top uh, of 1912. If this is true, so gold prices shouldn't go lower below the 1060. However, we've seen just a little bit of that, but it seems to be more accurate than to taking it from 1999. That's number one. Number two, which is a little bit, we're not talking about like a full scale of uptrend in gold yet. This is one thing that you have to keep an eye on. It is not an uptrend yet. Well, it's an uptrend on a very long, 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 long term. But on the short term, if we just put some lines in here, right? Okay. We're still within the same trend since almost, or to be more accurate, let's, uh, there you go. Is that the shadow of it? Oh, yeah. It is still within the downtrend since 2011 until today, which is lasting lasting until today. So so far, there is no uptrend. There is no uh, there is no um, what do you call it? There is no solid uh, idea of an uptrend. However, at the same time, we can actually place an uptrend also from here, just to look at the uh, the last drop that we've seen. Okay, that's number one. Number two, there is or there was a huge support area here around the same the same level that we've seen for the past also almost like two years in 2014 and it seems it seems to be here that this might be another formation that might be testing the 1300 in the next few in the next few weeks or the next few months but at the same time on the monthly chart don't forget the 1380 oh, sorry not the 1380 today it's 1261 that's why I actually is struggling at the 60 this is the uh, the moving average or this is the 50, uh, the 50 uh, month moving average. That's why it's very, uh, it's very wide. The 50 month moving average standing here at 1261. So this might be a struggle for gold, like to break above it. However, if you look at last week and what happened in and gold last week, especially uh, last week. So last week it was, hold on, and this is what we've said actually in our previous webinar. So if we take just the horizontal line all the way here. In the previous webinar, we said, oh, the maximum that we might see the price is to test 1250, and from there we might see some sort of a retracement. However, it was a surprise to me that the price has continued all the way up and broke this solid resistance easily in just the one day and closed in green, and now we're still trending higher. And at the same time, there's a confluence here, which is the 50-day moving average 
is equal, almost equal to the 50 month moving average. That's why you have to be careful here. I won't be a buyer at, at these levels, especially here at this level. I would wait for a retracement, some sort of like some somewhere toward 1250 or even 1240 before thinking about adding to my positions to my positions again. So this is one of the things that you have to keep in mind. Okay, that's number one. Number two, in order to say that there is a huge uptrend coming in gold, well, we have to break above the 1300. Let's be realistic. The trend is still on the downside, but there is a chance for gold to rise in the next few months, especially if inflation continued to rise further, as we're seeing right now, at least it's just continuing on the rise. And even central banks are changing, excuse me, I'm sorry, they're changing uh, their estimates for inflation. And now there's a lot of talks about that an overshoot in inflation is possible. So you have to keep an eye on this, on this very, very carefully in the next few days. So this is from the technical point of view. At the same time, on a very short term, uh, and why do we think that there might be a retracement? If you take the Fibonacci retracement, whether from this cycle or the other, it's almost the same. It's almost the same case here. But let's take it from 2016 highs all all the way to uh, this 2016 lows. So here we have the 50, uh, the 50 percent, which is already 1248, and continued all the way. But the 61.8 is at 1278. Is this accurate? We don't know yet because the resistance of uh, the 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 resistance that we've seen here in January it was a little bit below the 250. But if you take it from just a little bit of to this cycle here or the, the this cycle here, you can see that there was a struggle around the six the 50 percent and then all the way continued all the way back to 61.8. Right now it is above the 61.8, and there's a little bit of a confluence between 61.8 and the 50 day moving average. That's why you have to keep an eye on on the levels here because we could easily break uh, or decline all the way back to the 50s or even the 40s before the trend yeah, before the trend resumes. And even if you add any another or more more indicators such as uh, stochastics or RSI, gold is a little bit overbought. And if you want, you can actually add it. Pretty quickly, stochastic. Uh, whether if it's the slow or the slow or the fast, the indicators are solid. They're higher. They're positive. But here you have the stochastic indicators is showing that we're above 90. So that's plenty of over overboat, at least on the short term. So that's why. I wouldn't be a buyer here in gold, but I would definitely think about buying on dips. Another thing that you have to keep on watching, as I said, on a weekly basis, there's two things that I keep a track on. First of all, is the technical side clear to you guys? Or if there is any question, you can you can leave it in the in the in the question and I'll 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 answer it. So that's the technical point of view. Okay. But there's a two things I keep I keep an eye on it almost every week and almost sometimes every day because there's the daily data and also the uh, daily data and also weekly data. But the daily data, this the chart here that you're uh, can you see this chart? Yeah, the chart that you're seeing that you're seeing here it's called the ETFs last known uh, uh, ETFs holdings gold ETFs. Okay, so there's the institutions and uh, hedge funds and banks and mostly mostly hedge funds. They own physical gold, and the chart here is basically on a weekly basis. You can see it on the daily basis, but also on a weekly basis. It's much better on a on a weekly basis than a daily basis. But if you can track it on a daily basis, that would be great. Unfortunately, there's no data like free data online that you can track this. But we're trying like to to put it also on Orbix website. On a daily basis, in the next few, in the next few, uh, in the next few months, but this is where basically what it shows here. It shows how many ounces of gold that hedge funds and uh, and wealth wealth funds are holding. How many ounces of gold since the beginning? Let me just try to up a little bit until the beginning of this year, from January. 
they were holding 52.9 million ohms. But as of today, they're holding 54.7 million ohms of gold. So this is an increase of also like 2, 2.5 million ohms for the past, only for the past two months, from January all the way to, to, February, uh, to February. So those are also one of the main things that you have to keep a track on because it also reflects what basically hedge funds and uh, institutions, banks are thinking about gold. If you look at the historical chart here, it is definitely totally different from what happened in 2012. In 2012, when the prices were at record high, they were holding 700, 76 million. But for the time being, they're holding 54. We're still like way below that level. However, this is when the price of gold started to go down. And they started at the same time, hedge funds, wealth management, uh, banks, financial institutions started to unload and start even selling selling the gold and this is why there was a sharp decline in gold all the way all the way to the uh, 1100 so they kept on liquidating their their positions as gold were gold prices were declining so but at the same time since 2015 until today we are on the upside even though that we have seen some sort of a decline at the end of 2000 uh, at the end of 2016 but this is still okay because we had a rebound here at the same time so one of the major things because this is the fifth weekly increase in a row in in gold uh, in gold ETFs. So this is one of also the main things that you need to keep a track on whether you can whether you have Reuters or whether you have Bloomberg terminals or if you have uh, uh, any website. I, I don't think so. It's it's a, it's it's free of charge like on any of the websites. But one of the things that I keep track on on a daily basis because you can see this also on a daily basis because the data. They publish the data almost on almost on a daily basis. Okay, so that's the weekend here, and this is the 27th. Actually, they're still holding 40, uh, 40, uh, 54, sorry, 0.73 million dollars. Okay, which is still also higher than uh, a little bit higher, just a little bit higher than than Friday, but at least it's higher than the previous week. Okay, that's the second chart that I look for, which is again, it's called gold ETFs physical holdings. Okay. I hope this is clear. Number three, which is the most important one to look for, which is we provided on the website. Let me show you this. Can you see it? Can you see it? Nope. Why? Oh, hold on. One second. Sorry. Uh, no, 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 where's, where's the, why the screen keeps on, sorry, hold on, I'm going to see if I can show you the transition, no, all screens, oh, okay, this one. Can you see the screen? Oh, yes. Okay, fine. So, do you know or have you ever heard of the, the Commitment of Traders report? Have any any of you like heard of something called the CLT chart or Commitment of Traders report? Okay, there's a lot of no's. But, okay, fine. Uh, okay, so, this, this basically, or this... Um, this data is published on a weekly basis by the CFTC in the States. And it basically shows, or the Commitment of Traders is a report issued by the, by the CFTC, or what you call it, Commodity Future Tra Trading Commission, for the holding of the participant in the futures market. That's not a spot, it's the future market, gold and silver. Okay, these futures are placed, or places, or places to buy and sell, whether buy gold, sell gold, uh, copper and there's also for currencies there's a lot of them but basically the report shows how many uh, longs how many shorts are placed in the futures market in the states on a weekly basis so the chart here shows three lines 
the first line is the something called non-commercial lungs, which is the lungs. Let's just make it very, uh, very easy. And the shorts and also the net long short. Let's just scroll down to gold first and then we'll talk about it. We'll talk about silver later. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So we have the, let's take out all of these just to make sure that you understand what it is. So first, non-commercial lungs. The chart shows the history of how many people, how many, how many, how many investors placed long contracts or buy or how many buy contracts or how many buy positions they have or how many uh, how many positions they bought in gold and this is the price history from almost i guess it's 2000 and 2009 until today and this is very significant because again this is in 2016 when the prices went all the way back up we had a huge run up in gold all the way to 1360 but since then it went all the way back down at the at the end of last year but since the beginning of the year, if you zoom in just a little bit, it is just a little bit in a very tight range, almost a little bit on the upside. So it's we started the day, uh, the year actually, 2016, at 206,000, and now we're standing around 219,000. So there is a still a little bit of a bias, but the most important thing here. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, the most important thing here is that, again, this is the the longs. If you add to it the shorts, and let's take this off. Those are the short positions. So if if you add the longs and the shorts, so you have, if you look at the box here, so you have 219,000 longs, but at the same time you have the 95,000 in shorts. But if you look at the difference between the decline for the past for the past few months, the shorts has been declining while all while the the longs were just a little bit rising, which is something positive for gold because sellers are not increasing their bets. They're on the other hand, they are just what's happening. Okay, sorry, excuse me. Yeah, so. Longs are rising just gradually and very slightly, but at the same time, you have the the the, the longs are defining. At the beginning of the year, we were at around uh, where is it? Uh, the top in here. Uh, we're talking about 112,000, but today we're talking about 95,000 short positions. Okay, so shorts are are getting scared, are liquidating their positions, but longs are still a little bit stable after this huge crash. We add one more thing to this, which is the net long short, which is the net between longs minus shorts, which is the net so far, excuse me, it is still positive. It is still 123,000. At the beginning of the year, we started, sorry, we started at 98,000. And now we're all the way up to 123. So those are the three charts that I look at. I look at the technical charts as everyone else. I look at the ETFs holdings. And most importantly, on a weekly basis, I have to look at the CFTC data, which is a very important indicator to look on what basically traders have done for the past week. Are they positioned to or are they adding to their, to their positions to buy or to short? As long as you're on the buy side or as long as the net the net position is basically positive, not minus, this means that still longs are in control. And this is the case for the time being, that gold is still on the long side. Is this clear for you to uh, – is this uh, is there any question until until now? Because we're going to uh, – we're going to switch right now to, um, to silver and it's going to be faster than gold because if this is uh, clear, please, please let me know. Okay, got all yeses. Yes. Okay, fine. Okay. So just going back quickly to the um, uh, to gold uh, to gold chart. Yes. Let's go back quickly just to gold chart and just to 
give you the, the levels that we're looking for. Again, so right now the 1260 is very important to look at because, again, I, I mean, today we even, I guess, uh, did we also reach, we reached almost 1259. That's the high of the day. Uh, well, actually, 1260, 20 is the, is, the, is the high of the day. And the 100-day moving average or the 50-day moving average stands at 1260, 76. So there's some more, some room for more upside. But again, be careful to be a buyer at these levels. I mean, you always try to buy to buy low and sell high, but you don't buy or to chase the chart. Don't chase, don't chase gold. Don't chase any currency in uh, any currency in FX market or even silver. Okay. But for the time being, a break above 1260, this would increase the chances for another bull run all the way maybe toward 1270 because don't forget to look at the monthly chart as we said the monthly chart here was the level we're talking about it sorry yeah 1270 s and all the way to 300 300 is actually the key because 300 is where the major downtrend the major downtrend stands so I believe that's going to be tough this year but as I said as long as inflation keeps on pushing higher and if Trump tomorrow shows huge fiscal policy to to pump the economy and to rebuild the, the, the infrastructure in the states that's going to be one of the key things for uh, for uh, for gold one last thing gold and silver but one last thing also that you have to keep an eye on 15th of March we have the expiry of the debt ceiling in the states which is gonna be something very important to watch and how Donald Trump's gonna deal with it if this basically collapse in terms of you know government shutdown or he made whatever he he wanted to do this might be one of the key factors for for gold to rally in the next few in the next few months okay so this is for gold, as I said, 12, 1260, 1270s, and 300 are the key for this year. And I believe that we will visit these levels until then. We don't know what's going to happen after, but at least those are the levels that we are looking for this year. Switching to uh, silver. Silver is going to be, again, as I said, silver is going to be very fast. But one of the things that you need to also to keep an eye on, silver is outperforming gold since the beginning of the year. Uh, silver is up more than 10%, but gold is up only by uh, only by 5 5 5.5% so far. And this is again because of the uh, uh, the the demand from the industri uh, from industrial production uh, sectors. But they both have the same almost the same story. But what's most what's what's very interesting here is that silver is trading above all of or the entire moving averages here i used to i usually use the 50 day 100 day moving average and also the uh, 100 day and the 200 day moving average so far silver is just trending very nicely and going all the way up and keep adding on a daily basis also if we look uh, from a technical point of view a trend line a trend line here oh what is it we're almost at the same levels well, or almost the same formation as as gold if you also wanted to add another short term uh, whether you add it here or also if you want to add another one uh, no, same level just from here all the way here so we're where actually it looks like just a gown fan but whatever so we broke the first trend line and we broke the second one and here we have the major one that we need to break in the next few in the next few days actually otherwise we might see some sort of another retracement but it's the same thing that is the same thing to keep an eye on at the same time the resistance area for uh, for for silver you can start from here all the way to the body uh, which is 1860 which is pretty close though we're less than 30 cents away from it which is also some sort of a confluence with uh, with with the trend line. The technical indicator, just like gold, it's a little bit uh, overbought because we've been rising since mid December until today. Unlike gold, it's been since uh, since uh, the beginning, the end of December. But such such rally that we've seen in 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 silver. I mean, on the monthly chart also, it shows some sort of uh, uh, that the retracement is actually 
almost over. Let's just switch into monthly very pretty quickly. Yeah. At the same time, on the monthly chart, if you look at it on the, the bigger picture, the trend line for the monthly chart is already broken, but it's still, again, we need more, we need at least more, uh, I mean, more factors to, to price in. That's number one. And also you can add, if you like to add one in here too, there's many, uh, many trend lines that basically shows that the trend for silver is already, is already on, on the upside. Except actually this one, which is like still far away from here. But and one more, one more trend line. It was I guess it was this one. I'm not sure if it was this one. Yeah, I guess so. It was this one. Okay. So whether you like the trend lines or not, the thing is here that we have some sort of a momentum. And if we remove the rest of all the trend lines, forget about the trend lines, and let's talk about just the simple levels here. The 200 month moving average actually held back in 2015, despite the fact that we broke through it just for a few, uh, for one month actually, the second month we already rebound above it. This is still very positive for, for silver. That's number one. Number two, why again, the same resistance level that we were, we've been talking about, which is the 1860, is it the 18, 1860? It is also the former support area, which is right now, it's a resistance that we tried to break it in 2016, but failed. But this is the second attempt. And the second attempt is always important. Keep an eye on it because 1860, a break above that resistance, which is the 50, uh, the 50 uh, month moving average, this would definitely uh, bring the potential for, oil, for, for silver at least, I would say, the $20, the $20, to, uh, the $20 to keep uh, or to push toward uh, $20. So that's uh, the monthly, that's the daily we talked about. So as I said, in terms of, in terms of silver, is more kind of clear than gold. We, I would love to see some sort of a, a retracement 1790, 1760s, 17, uh, where I will be interested to increase my positions there. Okay, the same charts that I showed you for gold, also they are available for silver. This is the chart for the silver ETFs, and if you look back in November of end of November or exactly let's say what's this one uh, 4th of December of 2016 in one week just one week okay silver holdings or the ETFs holding basically increased from 562 million all the way to 637 million go back to the chart uh, where the uh, it's AG we're told we said 4th uh, December or is that November 27th yeah, the week of November 27th, it was, where is it? Yeah, uh, November 27th is actually here, oh, the week of November. So let's look at the weekly chart. Uh -huh. Yeah, the weekly chart, November 27th, if you look at it, it would be the same time when, where is it, November 27th? The same time when, when silver started like to, rise after the test of the 50 well, or the 200 week moving average however it was a short term decline and then all the way back up since then and this is when the ETFs basically or the ETF holdings increased by almost more than uh, more than 20 percent in one week again in one week since then they have been declining a little bit but they're still stable and this is if you look, if you look back in and there's this is a record high in silver ETF holdings. This is a potential more than even more than gold. I see a potential in silver more than gold because I still also believe that silver is still very cheap though uh, compared to compared to the uh, to adjusted inflation. Okay, we have 15 minutes. The last chart uh, that I would like to show you here is as I showed you before is the uh, hold on, where is the silver? Uh, yeah, exactly. More than a fifty. No, uh, not a fifty. It's uh, it's almost twenty percent. Five hundred sixty-five to six hundred twenty-eight. Okay, never mind. Twenty or fifty or one hundred. But the thing is, the chart talks for itself. Okay. Uh, the last one. Let me show you here the chart of the uh, silver. COT chart, 
which is this from the CFTC, the one that I showed you before. This is for silver. And let's take it off again and let's have a look at longs. Longs near record high in silver. In the States, in the future markets, basically there's still bets on silver are still on the upside. They're still on the upside. Despite the fact that we had the dip back into back in November, but still it went all the way back up from 83, I guess, 79,000 all the way to 108. This is the last week until 20, uh, 21st of February. Okay, that's number one. Shorts, which is the most important thing again. Shorts are declining for the past, since the beginning of the week, the year, sorry. Shorts are declining and we're almost at the lowest level since almost 2013, within the same range. Okay, but since shorts are declining, longs are increasing and they're recovering. So the net is basically on the upside, near record high, and both the net and the longs are near record high. So this is, again, one of the things that you have to keep an eye on because it will give you what's the consensus, what, what basically the markets are pricing in, what the traders are, uh, are pricing in. The final thing that I would like to talk about is the U.S. dollar, which is going to be a major, a major, just a major, um, uh, the quick recap on it, because I believe the U.S. dollar will, will be one of the major factors that will, will see some sort of a, uh, an extended rally in, in gold and silver. So here, this is the U.S. dollar index for the past or since the beginning, uh, uh, of November, there was kind of some sort of a starting to build what do we call it, a head and shoulder. So here we had the left shoulder is already in place since November, and then we went all the way back down, almost below the 100. But uh, before that, let me just put the 100 out here. Uh, because this is a very important level to watch the 100. It's a psychological support right now. Uh, so it broke through that resistance all the way back down, retested it, and then it fight all the way back to 103. We reached almost 100, uh, 103.80. But since then, it spent more than two weeks trying two weeks trying to break above that resistance, and then it continued all the way back down. Unfortunately, it made all the way to 99.20s, but it managed to recover all the way back up. However, right now, this is this is why I'm actually interested in the dollar index right now because the formation that you're seeing right now is a potential head and shoulder on the daily chart and this is pretty significant we just need to look for the fundamental catalyst which might come through Trump because if Trump is looking to bring back all of the industry all of, all of the all of the uh, the manufacturing back to the states in order to be in order to be uh, or in order to increase the competitiveness or of the US uh, of the US um, of the US product they need to devalue or not to devalue. They need to keep the dollar under pressure. This is why you have to keep an eye also on the dollar index that so far the formation is working perfectly. We just need a break below at least a break below the 100 and the neckline, which is, I mean, that's an inverse neckline, but the neckline is basically some sort of around 9930s, 9920s. But for the time being, you have to keep an eye on this one. As long as the dollar index is trading below 101.70s, I would be interested to keep on buying gold and silver. But as I said, not on these levels. Wait until the wait until the uh, uh, what do you call it? Wait until the the retracement first, and then you go in. Let the trade come to you. Don't chase it. So. Uh, Actually, this is this is all the charts that we uh, that I have for you today. Uh, I'm going to open the discussion if you have any any other questions, and if you have any questions, I'll be uh, I'll be uh, I'll be happy to uh, to answer. The uh, also the uh, this webinar is recorded, so if you have any uh, any questions, also you can uh, you can or if you're if you're late here or if you came in late, you can also. Uh, you can also uh, see it online in the next few days. So thank you guys for coming. Thank you for uh, for watching us today.